One of the interesting things with this type of technology is making sure you've got a clear distinction between when the car's in control of the task and when I'm in control. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'll use a button on the steering wheel to engage our system, get some noise to say it's okay, and now I won't actually touch the steering wheel again, I can use this tablet display to engage the system. But to make sure I've got control, I'm actually still going to keep control to start with of the gears, the brake and the pedals. So I can press this button here, that's engaged the steering, you can see the steering's just straightened us up, but I'm still in full control of the speed of the vehicle. And one of the things we wanted was to make this transition between automated driverless mode and me being in control quite smooth. So I've still got my feet on the pedals. I can just choose at my own comfort. I'm happy the system's running, it's doing what I want to do. If I take my feet off the pedals now, it's immediately snapped into speed control mode as well and we're fully automated from this point. And it's just taking us around. How's it knowing where we are? Well, there's a number of different ways of doing this. What we've got for you today is just a, a kind of pre-described route of where I want to take you. Um, there's a few little clever features on the way I'll show you, but largely this is predefined. What we're also working on is some systems that actually describe city maps and you can literally plug in a destination as you would do with your navigation system. But one of the things we're working on here is this idea of connected vehicles as well. So you see we're about to run through a green light. Um, it switched about the moment we went around the corner. And again, we're going to turn right at this junction and we're swinging round. And again, that traffic light will have just gone green in advance of us coming. Very nice, the idea of yes. And so how's it communicating with, with this? What, what are the technologies there? Uh, well, interestingly, with this particular test site, and this, this is a research vehicle, we're, we're trying a lot of technologies. So you can see, for example, we've just avo avoided a set of roadworks. Now, that kind of technology, that kind of information loaded onto a map sent to the vehicle could quite happily happen over smartphone-style communications. But we're also working on some specialist new communications specifically for allowing vehicles to talk to each other. And that's a kind of new technology. And also we've got a low-cost low radar on the top of the car and a camera here. Uh, well, the camera here is purely for um, tracking the, the test for us. So really what we're relying on is a high-grade GPS system complemented with some wireless communications and a radar on the front of the vehicle. And 2015 is, what the, is when the government wants to see a driverless car, um, wants to see you at the wheel without your hands on the wheel. Yes. Uh, is that feasible, people having driverless cars next year? I think there's still some issues to be solved, not necessarily technical issues, um, there's things to do with just the basic psychology and human behaviour of it. For example, we're coming to the end of the, the route I was going to take you on, so at this point I, need, I know that I need to take control back of the vehicle. So I'm just going to jump in and immediately override the vehicle controls and I'm back in control of the task. The difficulty with taking this to the public is going to be making this boundary clear between when the driver is expected to be in control and when the car is, and that's very difficult. One of the interesting things with this type of